you take your Bibles and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4 this morning, uh, I'll give you kind of what's been on my heart the last little bit. I taught this in Sunday school last Sunday and I had a fun time doing it uh, there. Uh, but Hebrews chapter 4, uh, we'll start in verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but what is in all points tempted like we are, or like as we are, and yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, last Saturday, I'll just give you what was born out of this passage of scripture. Last Saturday, I was we were traveling up to New Jersey and taking Andrew to uh, college, and I was sitting in the car and praying and praying just and spending some time in prayer, but also uh, he was driving. So um, having a little bit of extra prayer time there as well. But I, I was sitting there praying and knew that the week was going to be uh, difficult for my, my wife and I. And I just began to pray. And I was thinking about, I was like, Lord, who can I call to say, hey, would you mind praying for us today? And I was brought back to this portion of scripture. I've been reading through the book of Hebrews in my devotions. And I was brought back to this as if the Holy Ghost of God reminded me that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I just honestly went back to the Lord in this fashion uh, and said, all right, Lord, I don't need, and not that I don't need people to pray for me, but in this situation, the Lord was reminding me that, hey, I am here. I'm here. And so I went back and I began to just to think about this and he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And I just began to honestly think about Christ and raising children. And again, just in the situation that we were in, uh, there we were getting ready to drop our son off. And I, I, one of the things that I thought about as I looked at the word infirmities, it, it deals with uh, just being weak. Uh, whether it be a physical weakness, whether it be a moral weakness, and not saying that we don't have moral character, but just being weak in some things. And I, I thought about that. He, Christ knew what those infirmities were, both physical, and may I say it this way, emotional as well. And I began to think and just, again, diving into this and just pondering on it, picking at it, so to speak, and just looking at it from different points of view. I, I, I thought about this. I thought, how does Christ know what we feel. Now, a lot of times we look at this, we look at that passage of scripture and we skip the word infirmities and we jump to the latter portion of it in dealing with temptation. And not, there's nothing wrong with that. But as I looked at this and I thought about it, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. It wasn't just about temptation and doing wrong. It was about the day-to-day -day things that we go through. The ups, the downs, the feeling of this wife and her husband being pronounced dead and then now he's alive and moving back and forth. He knows those things. And one of the things that I thought of, and I just thought of this, how does God know about these things? And I went back and I thought about John chapter number 11 there where Lazarus had died. That was my first thought on it, and I began to think about this, and all of a sudden, I, may I say it this way, I stepped from the point of Christ rebuking Martha and Mary for their lack of faith that he could resurrect them, or resurrect Lazarus, but then I stepped back and I looked at it, he all of a sudden was getting the concept of time. Here was God all of a sudden getting the effects of, feeling the effects of time. And you're sitting there, you're going, Brother Devin, what do you mean? We as human beings only understand a beginning and an end in life. We see a baby born and we see a person die. It has a beginning and it has an end. We understand that man uh, generally lives between 60, uh, 70 and 80 years. And anytime you know, for the most part in our minds, anytime over 60, if someone dies, yes, between 60 and 70, we might say they're a little, they were a little young to die, but we look at them and go, they've gone through their life. They're coming up on that point. And I, and I, I thought about some things the other day and I'm going, no, that doesn't look as old as I once thought it did. But at the same time, those are expected lifetime endings. And here's Christ in John chapter number 11 He's confronted with that and the mortality. And, uh, and now, may I say it this way, when Martha and Mary are talking to him and Mary, Martha's talking to him, and now all of a sudden it's, it, oh, that's what it means to not fully understand 
eternity. Because you see, we, we can say it, we can get up here, we can preach about eternity all day long, but do we grasp it? No, we can't. You say, why can't we? Because we're a finite creature trying to understand an infinite God and we, we can say it, we can do we can look at it, we go, yeah, we know there's eternity, but to experience it, no. But yet here's an infinite person, God himself, now seeing finite and experiencing the fact of, oh, wait a minute, and I say it, feeling what they felt. Understanding now that, oh yes, they know about the resurrection because Martha told him about it. But to full, but she didn't fully grasp it. And he, and may I say it this way, it was just, you say, what are you getting at? I'm going back to 414 where he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He understands our constraints on time and then our sorrow. Why? Because he experienced it there. And that was just one of the things that I thought about. And then again, I, I, again, we're driving up through there and I'm thinking, but how does he know to raise children? And this is where I had a little bit of fun. I asked the wives, like I said, I taught this in Sunday school. I asked the wives, I said, y'all know the difference between your husband and your children, right? And they said, and they just kind of looked at me like, yeah. I said, the difference between the two of them is they're older and their toys are more expensive. That's pretty much the only difference between a, a five-year-old child and a 50-year-old adult man is the toys are more expensive and he likes having them around. That's just, and, and we had a laugh about it. And you say, what's the principle on that? Now, let's look at it. Here was Christ with his 12 disciples understanding what it was like to maybe, may I say it this way, raise some children. And I began to just think about the 12 disciples, and I don't have everything for all of them, but just began to think about some personality traits on some of them. I thought about Peter, we know about Peter, and I thought about him. He's the guy that just goes and gets it done. And in my mind, he's the guy, and this is just what I thought of as I was thinking about him. He's the guy that the Lord says, hey, go get that task done. And Peter says, okay, and he runs through the wall, you know, like the cartoon characters, to get the job done instead of going through the door. And here's God going, and here's the Christ going, told you to do that but if you would have moved over three feet you would have saved me some heartache by having to repair the wall now if you just moved over three feet and so I, and I thought about Peter I thought about uh, Philip the, or James and John uh, I thought about them as far as you know just they're the they're the son, they're the uh, sons of thunder hey they're the ones that were better than you hey why because mama said hey can you put one of them on your right hand and one of them on your left hand and here's God here's the Lord having to deal with somebody that thinks they're better than everybody else Hey, yeah, we're the children, uh-huh. And, and so, again, just looking at some of this, I thought about Philip when uh, it said that when, uh, some of the Greeks came to him and he had a, a Greek name, and him maybe thinking he was the stepchild or the outcast, a part of the outcast of the group because I've got this Greek name. I'm not a Jew. I'm not part of this. Then also I thought about uh, uh, Levi or Matthew. I thought about him being... And, um, him and maybe even Simon the Zealous, you know, kind of being the black sheep of the family. Nobody wants to hang around them. Nobody wants to deal with them on that because, hey, you, what are you doing here? You're the one that's, you know, what are you doing here? And so I, I just kind of thought about them. And you say, what are you getting at? Here's Christ again, having to deal with all this and raising children and dealing with these men. And you say, what are you getting at? He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what we're going through. I thought about some of the other ones that are not as well known, Nathaniel, and uh, some of the other ones I thought, maybe, you know, they could either be the middle child syndrome that nobody cares about them, or they could be, you know, um, the stepchild, the middle child, the stepchild. Or, and so just some thoughts there on it. And then you say, well, what about Judas? Now, I, I, I'm going to look at Judas on two sides of it here. Number one, we know the actual literal side of it in that he's the child that never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. And, you know, to break that mom and dad's heart over not doing what's right. But then just for sake of argument and just for looking at some of this, I'd like, I wanted to flip that just a little bit. And maybe he's the child that could also, he could also represent the child that mom and dad, he got saved at the, at the age of nine or 10. And he knows he's saved, but he's backslidden. I'm not saying that, I'm just, again, looking at this from a parental point of view on this, that he's not doing what he's supposed to do. And then I forgot about Thomas. Thomas is the hilarious one. Doesn't believe a word mom and dad says. And, you know, you got doubting Thomas there. And so you say, well, what do you, those are, all, if we look at it and, and, and you've raised children, you know that all of those personalities come out in your children. 
At some point, something comes out. One of those is probably going to fit somewhere. And Christ knew about it. And you say, what are you getting at on this? It's where I was at and what God showed me. And it was just something that, I, that was a help to me in that time. And, and just to say, hey, you know, the Lord knew about what we were going through. The Lord knows what you're going through. No matter what your infirmity is, it's not always, as we like to preach on the latter phrase of that, dealing with our temptation. Some of it is just dealing with our weaknesses. And God knows our weaknesses. He's experienced those things. And that's this morning just what I wanted to kind of take a look at and say and give you a charge this morning that, hey, no matter what you're going through, He's experienced it. And I'm not talking about the bad stuff as far as temptation this morning. I'm talking about the stuff that we get sorry over, that we get we mourn over. The highs and the lows, the ups and the downs in life. Those are the things I'm talking about that Christ knows what we're going through. And when you don't think there's anybody else, remember there's him. When, when, all, when, when you want to pick up the phone and call somebody else, and I'm not against calling somebody and asking them to pray for you. I asked people to pray for us this week as we traveled and pray for us because I knew it was going to be a difficult time in our lives. But I did ask people to pray for us. But may I say this, there comes a time when you don't need to ask people to pray, but just talk to God about it. Get alone and spend some time. Why? Because he's the comforter. He's the one that sent the Holy Ghost to us. And he's the one that knows exactly what we're going through in life. And I just thank God that we have a high priest that's not that is touched, sorry, that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities and knows what we're going through. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for the time to be here this morning. Father, I pray that you would be with us and go about our business today. Father, think of the ones on the prayer list, Lord, that you would just be with them and Lord, help them as uh, in their infirmities, Lord. Father, we love you and we thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.